Hi, how you doing? Today I'm wearing my father's 2004 Omega Aquaterra quartz watch. You can see that there. This is the 39.2 millimeter version. It's an Aquaterra, so it's still got 150 meters of water resistance, and it comes with a scratch resistant sapphire crystal with the anti-reflective coating. Now, there's a problem with this watch. You may notice that the second hand is skipping every four seconds. What does this mean? Well, let's look into it. I'm Andy, and welcome to the English Watch. Okay, don't forget to like and subscribe, and please leave any comments at the end, and I'll get back to them, as you know. Okay, so let's get into this. So, as I said, where are my father's Omega Aquaterra? So it's around 20 years old, so 2004, and it is a quartz. So I know, you know, some people be drawing breath through their teeth, quartz watch, come on. But you know, these are great quartz watches. I mean, this is thermally compensated. It's caliber 1538, which is based on the ETA 255461. And it's got some enhancements. It's got rhodium plating. It's got the battery life indicator, which is where it shows it jumping every four seconds. So as the battery runs down, there's something within the microprocessor within the watch that makes the seconds hand just tick every four seconds. Now on the Omega website, you can still look up the, the watch itself. So there it is. It's a reference 2517.50. And as it says, it's 39.2 millimeters, 150 meters of water resistance, sapphire crystal. And like I said, caliber 1538. Now it calls it a battery life indicator. And as we said, this is the tick in every four seconds that shows that the battery is running down. And that's quite normal for high grade quartz movements. Now obviously Omega don't advertise a power reserve for this watch because you know there's no spring inside, it's a battery. And it says the battery should last around 42 months, which is around three, three and a half years. And this was last serviced in 2018 where it had a complete new movement. Now looking at the watch, you can see it's got the modern Aquaterra cues, it's got the Seamaster case with the lyre lugs. It's got the broad arrow minute hand and the alpha hour hand and it's fully loomed up, as you'd expect, for a Seamaster. This is, after all, a sports watch. Now this one's got a deep, glossy, lacquered black dial with those shiny hands, some may say it's a bit too blingy. It's got an applied Amiga marquee at the 12 o'clock with printing for the Amiga text and Seamaster 150 or 500 feet. It's got a very discreet date window and with a black date disc with white text, and that makes the date window almost invisible, and I like that. It's got applied rhodium markers all around the outside and a printed minute track. Looking at the back, it's quite plain. It's got the hippocampus on the back. And what does it say? It just says Seamaster Aquaterra. So nothing special. And it's got the dimples in the back for the case removal because it's a screw down case back. Now, before this model was launched, it was the Seamaster 120 that was kind of the surf and turf, as they call it, watch. And I had one of those, a 36 millimeter. And you can see in my previous video on the Black Bay 36, how I talk about that watch. That's obviously gone now. So the Aquaterra then took over in 2001 this one now comes on the three link bracelet, like the Planet Ocean today, and doesn't carry forward the tank track of the Seamaster 120 that the 300 diver still has today. I prefer this one. Now what this one also has is a very nicely tapered bracelet with no big clasp, and it's got a single button deployment, butterfly clasp with the sliding latch. Now you've got to be careful, this screw can fall out, so be careful of that and then it just closes shut. You know, this isn't for serious activities, this is just, you know, a bit of jewellery, but nicely made. So the new ones have this weird sort of butterfly clasp, it's quite difficult to, uh, to close in my view. So I like this one. Anyway, very accurate, dressy and sporty. All suit straps, all suit small wrists. You'd argue that 39 millimeters is the ideal size. Let's uh, get in there and have a look at that again. I think with a 39 millimeters and the fact it's only 11 millimeters thick, it wears so comfortable and it just disappears on your wrist. You know, you're never gonna catch your sleeve on this thing. So people in the, in the office are never gonna know it's quartz. Most of them probably won't even care or even know it's an Amiga. They'll probably think it's a, a boss watch or well, it's something else that you're gonna get out of the cabinet for a hundred quid. Um, but you'll know what it is. So the battery's running out, what are we gonna do? Well, we're in lockdown, so I can't just go and nip down the shops and ask somebody to change the battery. So what I did, I phoned around a few dealers in the area, the ones that would answer the phone anyway, and I got from varying prices from 100 to 140 pounds. 
So I thought, mm, that's, that's quite a lot. And then I've got to drive to them or post it out. And that's a bit of messing around. So I thought, why not? I'll give Omega a call. So as you know, if you followed me, my Planet Ocean had a little bit of trouble earlier in the year, last year. And uh, so I was in touch with them for quite a bit last year. So I knew the service was was good. You know, we did have a few problems and please watch that video to find out you know, what those problems were, but they're all resolved and I've got every faith that Omega down in Southampton in the UK are they're excellent at what they do. So I phoned them up and said, hey, you know, I've got an Aquaterra, needs a new battery. So we talked about that it got serviced in 2018 and you know, they traced the serial number and they could see what had been done to the watch previously. So I said, okay, yeah, it's a battery service only then. And what they do as well, and they change the, change the crown and the crown tube as well as part of that service. So, okay, great. Now this isn't a watch where you inter interact with the crown very often because it's quartz and it just stays there and it runs. So, you know, you're not gonna wear the crown up like you would winding a, a manual watch like the Speedmaster, for example. But nonetheless, it's still a nice touch and for 105 pounds. Brilliant, okay. Still sounds like a lot, but do you know what? Again, it's dad's watch. £100 every couple of years, not too bad, is it? Much cheaper than servicing this. Yeah, yeah That's, that's a, a weekend away in Paris. This one's going to cost me to service, so we'll have to wait for that one. Right. Okay, so Omega then send out their usual service pouch. So not only do you get a good value service, but you get the good old red service pouch. So they send you one of these to put the watch in and send out, but they also send it back in one of these. So you, know, you get a nice little travel pouch there. Yeah, you can buy these on eBay for 10 or 15 pounds, but if you include that in the service and the fact that I've only got to go into the post office to drop it off and they'll bring it back to me by uh, courier, that's not too bad really, because it doesn't take much of my time at all. So in there, we've got the courier envelope and usually I haven't looked at this yet we have the documents so in here we've got the watch and clock servicing price guide so that's the dear customer and in here we've got some prices so let's have a look so what are we going to do we've got complete service so it's not that um, Complete service prices, so non-chronograph quartz, £360. Now, this is more than a battery service, obviously. What they do is they, it's a complete disassembly, take the movement out. I think with the quartz, they'll change the movement. Um, now what Omega do as well, they, they give the case a light buff, if that's what you want, you know, bring it back up to uh, uh, a nice standard. Now, but we're not having that. We're just having the battery service. Here we go. Which is almost the same price as the water resistance. So if you just want to send your watch in to get it waterproof, you know, and if you dive with your watch often, then that service is £105. So uh, if you've got a dive watch and you do like to get it wet, then it's definitely worth having that done. Yeah, maybe, maybe once a year, uh, £105. You know, when you've got a watch that costs, you know, for an Aquaterra, you know, four or five thousand pounds or more, you know, depending on what it's made from. A uh, hundred pounds every now and again, it's not too bad, is it? Just to keep it running. Okay, so in okay, so in the water is resistant service, it says disassembly of case, cleaning the case and bracelet. So it's probably a lot of wrist cheese. My son wears this one, I don't know how much he cleans it, but you know. Uh, reassembly of the case, renewal of the water resistance, replacement of the battery for electronic calibers. That sounds pretty posh, doesn't it? But yeah, quartz. Uh, tuning of precision, which um, I guess they'll put it on the machine and just check that it works. And complete quality control. So not too bad. What else have we got? Well, we can also do uh, a dial restoration. So if we had an old watch where maybe we've got a bit of water damage, that's 795 pounds. Just a case refurbishment, 100 pounds. It's a polish and satin finish. Anyway, I'm okay with 105. I've paid more for that for a battery in the past. And Christ, my uh, my wife's Gucci watch, which you know, is worth half, less than half the value of that watch, it used to cost 70 quid every now and again to put a battery in it. Uh, and even then, the Gucci now, 
they won't won't repair it. They don't have the bits, which is odd because it's just a battery and some and an O-ring. So that is odd. But with Omega, you know, this watch, you know, you're going to be able to service it for life. Um, you know, it's got a top grade quality uh, movement in there, and short of an EMP, this thing will just keep running and just need a battery now and again. So pretty good, really. Anyway, so that was it. So what we're going to do? We're going to chuck it in the box, put it in the bag, send it off to Omega and we'll see how long it takes to come back. It should be about two weeks, they said, two to three weeks. So it's only a battery service and a, and a minor clean, and I say it's the crown and tube, so that's quite good, really. Uh, so that should be back before the shops are open again, which I think is the 12th of April. So there or thereabouts, so I'm, I'm quite pleased with that. And I imagine all our dealers are gonna be inundated with requests for services or for after sales. So I think what we're doing with this one, I think is the right thing to do. Anyway, I'm Andy. This has been the English Watch. Please like and subscribe, and 3,000 subscribers this week. Just under a year of the channel. Fantastic. The English Watch, I can't remember what I did my first video. I think it was April, so 11 months, 3,000 subscribers. Thanks a lot. You know, the support's been fantastic. I have to say, I very rarely get trolled. I get the odd comment that you think, you know, why did you say that? But hey, as I said, I ain't no expert. This is just me, me messing around with my watches. So if you want expertise, go somewhere else. If you want to just engage with me and how I go about my watch collecting or watch enjoyment business, then hey, you know where I am. But brilliant, thanks very much, and I'll see you soon. Bye for now.